Thank you for choosing Yaystar. This video might actually help you a lot if it is the very first time for you to install a Yaystar Asterisk Void PBX. In this video, we're going to see how to install a Yaystar Asterisk PBX. We will take a standard S300 as an example in the video. Usually, when we have a brand new factory equipment, the first thing we're supposed to do is to check the package contents. Make sure we received all items. If there's any problem, just contact the equipment provider. Open the carton. We should find an S300, an Ethernet cable, a power cord, two rack mounted kits and screws, rubber feet, one grounding stud and nut, a bracket, and HDD fixing screws. The disk locking bracket is only available on S300. S-Series PBX is modular designed. The system capacity is scalable. In other words, we can install different modules on the PBX to expand features. One S2 module provides two FXS ports. One O2 module provides two FXO ports. On a 2G, 3G, or 4G LT module, we can install a SIM card as a trunk. One SO module offers an FXO port and an FXS port. One B2 module offers two BRI interfaces. All these modules can be inserted on the EX08 expansion board. There are four slots on which we can install modules. Each slot is connected to two RJ11 ports on the front panel. As for the EX30 expansion board, it can provide an E1, T1, or G1 interface. D30, if we have installed one on the PBX, we can expand 100 more users and 30 more concurrent costs. Yet mind that the expansion board and D30 can only be installed on the S100 and S300. Unavailable on other models. If we bought some modules, please open the package and check if the module pins are bent or broken and the number of all modules. We will also have an antenna if we buy a 4G LTE module. If we purchase one piece of D30, we will also receive accessories of screws and a screwdriver. Having been checking the PBX and all accessories, we can start installation of the expansion board and modules. Make sure that we've cut off the power during the whole installation process. Otherwise, there may be a risk of electric shock. Please be cautious about that. On the front panel of S300, there are three empty boards. We can take them off and insert three expansion boards, while we can only insert two expansion boards at most on S100. Turn to the back panel. There are some ports and LED indicators. From left to right, they are, respectively, reset button, which can reset the system to factory settings when pressed. Power indicator. System Indicator, SD Slot, USB Slot, WAN Port, LAN Port, Console Port, 6 Antenna Sockets, Power Switch, Power Input, and Protective Earth. Then, remove the upper cover, loosen the screws on the enclosure, push and raise the cover. Now, it's taken off. We can see the inside structure. From left to right, there is a heat sink, motherboard, HDD bracket, and power supply. The HDD bracket is only available on S300. We can insert hard disk to expand the storage space. Next, let's see how to insert the EX08 expansion board. Push out the empty board, push in the expansion board. The board must match the slot on the motherboard. Lock out the four screws. By the way, inserting an EX30 expansion board is the same way. Now, let's move on to the installation of modules on EX08 expansion board. The installation method for every single piece of the module is the same. Even each module carries different quantity of pins. The function of each port depends on which module we have installed in the slot. Take 4G LT module as an example. First, insert the SIM card. Loosen and raise the cover. Insert that SIM card. Put the cover down and push it to lock. 
Adjust its direction according to the number of pins on each side while installing a module to the slot. Match the slot. Press the module vertically with average strength on each hand. Tips. It's not allowed to insert or pull out the module in a tilt angle. Otherwise, the pins of the module will be bent or broken. Next step. Connect an antenna to the 4JLT module. Take off the plug, connect the cable to the module, and fix the antenna. Yet the installation of D30 is different. The module should be installed into the D slot on the motherboard. On S300, there are two D slots while on S100 there is only one. When we install a D30, remember to turn its front side upwards, insert the module from a tilt angle, and then press it down. Lock the screws to fix the module. We've finished our installation of an EX08 expansion board, a 4G LT module, and a D30. Next, connect the ground. Attention please! Proper grounding is very important to reduce the risk of electric shock or protect the PBX from the bad effects of external noise in case of a lightning strike. A permanent connection between ground and the ground terminal of the PBX must be built. Tighten the provided screw stud to the port. Connect an 18 AWG grounding wire. Tighten the screw nut and attach the grounding wire to the grounding terminal. That's all. Please note that the grounding wire as well as the grounding terminal need to be prepared by yourself. Yaystar won't provide them. The last step. Close the cover and fix all the screws. After the installation, now we can run the equipment. Please make sure the upper cover has been fixed before switching on the power. If we want to remove the cover, please remember to turn off the power first, otherwise it may cause electric shock. Connect the power cord, turn it on. The power requirement for each model of S-Series PBX. Make sure proper power has been offered to the PBX so that it will work normally. Back to the PBX. We can check the status of the LED indicators on the back panel to see whether the equipment is running normally. The power LED indicators is static green. If the light is off, it means the equipment isn't running at all. The system LED indicator is blinking in green. The system works normally. If it's static green or it turns off, there must be something wrong with the system. The LED indicators of WAN port and the LAN port are usually off. If connected to the network at 1000 megabits per seconds, the light will turn static green. If connected to the network at 10 to 100 megabits per second, the light will turn static orange. We can see if the modules installed are running normally by checking the status of the LED indicators on the front panel. Once we switch on the power, all LED indicators will turn orange for a few seconds. Then all indicators will black out for a few seconds. The system can start working normally when indicators turn to a color, which depends on the module we have installed. As we mentioned, the 4G LT module is installed in the slot 1, so the corresponding interfaces are port 1 and port 2. Normally, the indicator of port 1 is static red and port 2 is off. If port 1 blinks slowly in red, it is saying there is no SIM card inserted in this module. If we have installed S2 module, the two indicators are green. If it's O2 module, the indicators are blinking slowly in red. When connected to a PST landline, the light will turn static red. If it is SO module, port 7 is FXS port, while port 8 is FXO port. So port 7 is static green while port 8 is blinking slowly in red. If it is B2 module, the indicators are blinking slowly in orange. When connected to BRI trunk, the lights will turn static orange. If all the indicators are out of working all the time, it means all the modules haven't been started normally. We need a troubleshooting. If all LED indicators are working normally, we can log in and start configuration. That was all we have for Yaystar Series Void PBX basic installation. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Check our linked videos for more details of system configuration. For more Yaystar updates, visit our website www.yaystar.com or follow our social media.